So just a few days ago on the channel, we discussed where Nintendo may be headed with Nintendo Switch Online in terms of their update cadence for new games being added into the service. Now that we are in a scenario where they're supporting numerous consoles that we should all be able to expect relatively frequent updates for, things like now Game Boy, Game Boy Advance games, in addition to N64 and Sega Genesis, and most likely an occasional appearance from NES and S. SNES. And in today's video, we need to go over the newest update to Nintendo Switch Online that just appeared in the form of a new Game Boy Advance game, and talk about the precedent that this sets for the frequency at which we may see new games drop into the Game Boy and Game Boy Advance library of systems, and ultimately discuss where we should be setting our expectations for new game additions now that Nintendo is in this new era of Nintendo Switch Online right now. What's up nation? If it's your first time on the channel, make sure you join Summer Nation by subscribing below. Hit the like button on this video if you enjoy it today. Make sure you turn on your bell notification icon so you're kept up to date with all the newest gaming news. And as I mentioned guys, today we were discussing the latest Nintendo Switch Online update that comes to us in the form of a Game Boy Advance game. This will be launching on March 9th as you can see the following post over on Nintendo of America's Twitter where it outlines the SAX and Unstoppable X mimicking Samus is on the loose and it could be just around the corner. Adventure to Planet SR388 as interstellar bounty hunter Samus Aran in Metroid Fusion coming to Nintendo Switch or Nintendo Switch Online plus expansion pack members on March 9th. Now, first and foremost, that was by far and away my most hyped and anticipated game that was on the upcoming Game Boy Advance roadmap of games that we saw them outline at the most recent Nintendo Direct. When we just got these systems added in back on February 8th, we are already getting a Game Boy Advance game dropped into the service just a month later, which is great because in times past, such as the N64 library of games, when that was revealed, we actually had to wait quite a while or at least a couple months from when the first initial library of games went live to when we saw any kind of additional support. I also would like to note the style at how Nintendo revealed this Game Boy Advance game where they gave us the, no pun intended, advance heads up because they actually went out of their way to say it will be launching on March 9th and it wasn't just one of those surprise shadow drops. Here's a new game that's being added into the service and enjoy it right now. This is more akin to how they treat N64 game releases. When it comes to those N64 games, not every single time, but oftentimes we get a week or two weeks or even sometimes three weeks heads up notice on when it will be live on the service and they treat it as a big deal. They give it an individual trailer, they market it and they promote it. That is exactly what they are doing with the Game Boy Advance library of games at this point, which leads me to believe it very well may be the alternating cycle that we talked about in the previous video where maybe the Game Boy Advance game is what we get this month and we will have to sit on the sidelines and wait to see if we are surprised with the addition of an N64 game also or if early April might hold the next N64 game with something like Pokemon Stadium 1 or 2, Mario Party 3 or 1080 Snowboarding or Excite Bike 64. We might not get multiple in the same month but with how early they are to the punch with this advance announcement there is still plenty of room in march clearly to announce some kind of n64 game so we truly are in uncharted territories and that is where a lot of the excitement comes into this conversation for me as well as the concern because you may remember too in that video we outlined that nintendo straight up has said at this point that they don't stick to any kind of consistent release schedule when it comes to new nso games and i know that's frustrating for a lot of people out there myself included especially when you're locked into an annual subscription. However, with the addition of Game Boy Family of Systems this early on into the service, I do think that it bodes well in terms of the value that they are now bringing to the table because I was really under the impression that we would have to ride through all the way until the September Nintendo Direct before they likely revealed these new additional systems because if you look at history, the September Direct has always been the big one for major NSO updates, but Nintendo broke that trend this time and dropped the addition in the February Direct, now leaving us in a scenario where we should expect new games from Game Boy Advance, Game Boy and Game Boy Color, of course being on the same emulator, in addition to the ongoing updates 
for N64 games that already has a partial roadmap built out and for Sega Genesis games. And you have to hopefully not totally forget about NES and SNES at this point. So the long and short of it is that is six different consoles or seven, depending on how you want to break it down with Game Boy and Game Boy Color, that they are now alternating updates through. And so I think that the possibilities of them doing multiple per month are a lot stronger with how fast they showed up with this initial batch of a Game Boy Advance game, promoting it with the trailer, dropping it in early March. By the way, side tangent here, guys, play Metroid Fusion when it drops. This was fantastic when it came out. This was actually arguably one of the games that cemented me as a lifelong Metroid fan because I played this shortly after I played Metroid Prime 1 on the GameCube and absolutely fell in love with the series and the level design and progression and upgrade path and the difficulty of the bosses and the enemies you come around, the puzzle solving. Solving. Everything is a top tier masterpiece in terms of mainline Metroid games, in my opinion, and Fusion sits amongst the top of those masterpieces. So it is saying a lot for this game to get a marketing push. I wish they would have put it out before Dread dropped on the Switch because I really wanted to have an easy way to replay Metroid 1 through 4. And they still need to bring Zero Missions, hopefully next or at some point in the future, to the Game Boy Advance console on NSO because. Metroid Zero Mission is such a superior version of the original Metroid than the original NES one is. It is a night and day difference, and anybody who hasn't played it, you haven't really fully, truly experienced Metroid 1 yet. It is that much of a groundbreaking upgrade when it comes to the gameplay experiences, and so I'm glad to see Nintendo leading off on such a strong foot with the Game Boy Advance library of games and giving it that same level of care and prestige as what we've seen with them handling and marketing the N64 games. They definitely want Game Boy Advance and N64 to be central points on why you sign up for the expansion pack and why it justifies that higher $50 annual price point that they are asking for today. I would just hope that at some point they do come along with monthly options because again, a central complaint is when we don't know what to expect in terms of new game additions, it really does get dicey that you could go two or three months at a time without seeing any kind of major updates and you've still technically been paying for all of that because you're locked in for the full 12 months. That said, my concerns are at ease following this newest update quite a bit with it being so early in the month of March that we could likely see additional consoles still get updated through the back half of the month. At the very least, let's hope that we see the Game Boy lineup of games get some kind of acknowledgement because the base tier is something that until Game Boy and Game Boy Color came around, we haven't seen any love or care for whatsoever. You've pretty much just been paying Nintendo $20 a year to have online play and cloud save storage and a very rare update for NES and SNES games and not great games at that. So I'm hopeful for the future of the service. I'm very excited for this particular update. I still believe that we have major additional consoles to look forward to in the future when we talk talk about next generation hardware like the GameCube, potentially the Wii. One day, if Nintendo gets creative and figures out the DS and 3DS, that would be fantastic too. But we are on a good trajectory. I hope that they, at some point in time, give us the option to purchase these as one-offs for people who don't want to be subscribed, but I honestly don't see that happening. I think Nintendo's making a ton of revenue with this service. They know they are, and they're kind of locking it behind that. Play them all or play none of them conveniently on the Nintendo Switch, and I think that they just start to build the value so much more and more over time that it just becomes a must-own service for most Nintendo Switch gamers out there. But I really want to hear from you guys at this point in the video, all your thoughts and feelings around Metroid Fusion being officially confirmed for the first additional Game Boy Advance game on March 9th. Are you planning on checking it out right away? Is it on your list of games to play at some point? And what did you think about how they did a standalone trailer for this, as well as a advance notice on when it would be dropping, similar to how they market N64 games? And definitely share with me whether or not you think we will still get an N64 game in the month of March? Or do you think that they do indeed stick to some kind of alternating update path where in March, months that we don't see a Game Boy Advance game, we see an N64 one and vice versa. And do you think that we do indeed see Game Boy Family of Systems updated later this month also? Or is this one advanced game all we should be counting on at this point for the month of March when it comes to new NSO games? So regardless of your thoughts and feelings on everything we talked about today, I do look forward to hearing from you all in the comments down below before you leave the video. 
as I do look forward to getting a back and forth conversation started with you all around this topic. Go watch yesterday's video next if you haven't already, which is on screen right now. Also, make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notification bell, and I will see you guys in the next video.